the commission was approved, I don't think volunteers who work to protect the natural environment of North Hampton mm -hmm. were concerned with the aid interests of defining the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, and our duties also include open space acquisition and management. We operate in a way that is consistent with open meeting law requirements, all meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance, and we invite public comment during the meetings, and we ask the public to limit the comments to issues that we have for you. Uh, today's agenda includes a, a hearing with a notice of intent for construction of the full story office building at Atwood Drive, uh, a request for a certificate of compliance at Riverside Drive, a request for a certificate of compliance on Locust Street, um, and any other business that was not foreseen when the agenda was published. Uh, we are being recorded again. General comments or events having to do with the specific case. If not, we had uh, minutes that Sarah sent around for a meeting on October, October 24th, uh, for which I was not present, so I didn't have a basis to uh, evaluate whether there was any modification. But let's open it by uh, so motion to approve. Uh, so moved. And a second? Second. Any amendments or modifications to those minutes? Okay. If not, all in favor? Aye. Uh, and opposed? So uh, the first case is uh, notice of intent for construction of the four-story office building, parking lot, utility, and stormwater management work. Uh, proposed within the bordering land subject to flooding and for the Connecticut River and the buffer zone uh, to border the vegetable record is at Atwood Drive. But before we start, Brian, I'm a co-worker, so I'll have to recuse myself. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Brian Huntley. I'm with Time Bond. Uh, with me tonight is Ken Dinsunas, who's with Development Associates, who are the managers of the project, and Eileen Sullivan, who is with Northwood, the owners of the project. Um, essentially, we're here tonight because we permitted this project with the, the Conservation Commission a number of years ago, and then we were back in front of you, I believe, in the summer of 2017 for some modifications when the, uh, the front building which is currently constructed was converted from originally we were proposing a hotel and then got changed to what is currently now the, the courthouse as well as some office buildings um, and then later in 2017 uh, the order of conditions the revised amended order of conditions that was issued expired and unfortunately we did not um, renew or extend those conditions in time uh, a, a large part of the construction of the first phase of this project has happened um, and when it came time to try to close the project out, and we were conversing with uh, both Doug McDonald for the DPW stormwater permit, and with Sarah to try to close out the, the permit here with the Conservation Commission, is when we learned that we no longer had an active permit, and there were a handful of items that, some of them were maintenance items, and a handful of them are also like what I would consider punch list items, for things that weren't done quite right. Um, when we determined that we had to do those additional, that additional work, we realized we needed an order of conditions to do it because we're both in floodplain here and we're in buffer zone to some bordering vegetative wetlands around it. So we're here tonight essentially with exactly the same project that was proposed, that was permitted and approved back in the summer of 2017, with the exception being there are a handful of locations where we've shown some minor changes to what's out there now to make the stormwater features work and to bring some of the stormwater um, ingraining in compliance with what the original design was. So I will see if I can make this work. Um, I, this is essentially uh, the site layout plan. And what we've done for, uh, for at, at Sarah's request is we, we handle this project as if the existing condition that's out there today is what we're starting with as an existing condition. So you'll see it shows that the courthouse is built, the courthouse is built, the parking that's associated with it is built, and in dark, are the portions of the project that are going to be associated with the future phase, which is phase four, the four-story building that's, that's mentioned in the application, as well as some of the improvements that we're proposing for the stormwater features and for bioretention areas. Um, and in addition to that, and this is something that we've been discussing back and forth with Doug McDonald, there are some concerns about the infiltration of these two basins and as well as infiltration within the bioretention basins. It's something that we experienced on 
The other side of the road, when these two buildings were built as well, a lot of times it's from silting that comes in during construction that needs to be mucked up and cleaned out at the end of the project. Um, so what we're proposing to do in addition to this, or as, as part of this project, is to do those maintenance activities um, to ensure that the, the project does comply with the original approval for infiltration and all those structures. We have also included some language in the permit application where, especially in the buyer retention areas, um, Doug suggested the possibility of using a different mix of engineering soil mix that is higher in sand and lower in organic. So if we're not able to make those work just by mucking them up, we included the, the option of actually pulling out the engineered soil mix and replacing it. Our hope is, based on the experience, that just doing the maintenance of these structures will take care of that and we won't need to do that replacement. One of the questions that Sarah had was with respect to the compensatory flood storage table. Mm -hmm. And what we found during this project is that there was an error that was done between datum, datum back when the project was originally permitted, that the site is was surveyed in NABD88, and the flood storage numbers are all in NGBD29. So when you bring that flood storage number in, it's off by 0.66 feet. So what we've done is we've provided an updated um, table that basically takes that into account. And what we did in the table, and this is where I think the confusion is, is that because the the elevation of the flood storage in NABD88 is 122.33. It's actually six tenths of a foot lower than the elevation 123 is, which is which is what is defined in NGBD29. And therefore, the previously approved flood storage, when we use this number instead, the numbers actually go down slightly because there's less of the site that's actually in the floodplain. So each of the elevations do show exactly what they were previously and what we're proposing now. And from a uh, um, compliance with, with uh, Welcome Protection Act, we're still providing more flood storage on the site in the proposed condition than we had in the original condition. And for the purpose of flood storage, because the site was handled kind of overall using um, 3D modeling and grading, the, the, the pre-existing flood storage number that's shown on this table was from prior to demo of the Clarion Hotel. We did not go through that exercise again now at this interim step, but at the end of the project, it will show a very clear improvement in flood storage capabilities between what was on the site originally and what the site will have after the project is completed. I think that that's in a nutshell, you know, what we're looking for. Our hope again is that it's essentially a new order of conditions for the same design that we had originally. The design hasn't changed in the sense that our goal for stormwater is exactly the same. The treatment is the same. In fact, in working with Doug McDonald, he doesn't even want a modification of the stormwater permit from the DPW. The existing permit that he has in his hand feels is appropriate and adequate for what we're proposing to do. And some of those issues are compliance to make sure that everything works the way it was approved originally. And I would love to answer any questions if you have any. Any questions from commissioners? So, quick question. Do you have an operation maintenance plan yes. associated with the uh, retention basins? We do. Um, and that is signed and I believe recorded. And so it's essentially a contractual agreement between the applicant and the city. And, and that was, you know, one of my comments was going to be as it relates to those infiltration basins, regardless of whether we are here in front of you tonight, they have an obligation to make sure that the, the system works as designed. Yeah. Have they done any measure? Uh, what's in there now, like I say, construction? Uh, so, so we didn't because what happened is about a year ago when we were trying to do the closeout on the project, um, and leading up to that, the basins had been working. When we got a final survey from the surveyor for the construction of this phase, um, and then submitted it to Doug is when all of the issues with the fact that there's not a current permit on the site came up. And at that point, we essentially stopped all activities on the site at Sarah's recommendation because we didn't have an active order of conditions and didn't have a permit and didn't want to have any violation issues going on. So since then, we haven't gone out, we haven't done these excavations or measured um, just because 
we wanted to take the same approach here of not doing any work with us. But that's certainly the, the plan going forward is, you know, with this in hand and then working with Doug, and one comment that Doug made even today in an email was he wanted to see a plan of, you know, the kind of the hierarchy of what we're doing when it comes to, you know, excavating to determine what the problem is. If we don't see that it's a blinding of the soil, then it's, you know, replacing the engineered soil or the soil below the basins until we get to a point where it functions the way it was intended. And I think, you know, we're hoping that, you know, you would be amenable to approving the project with a condition that we that we do that, that we provide a plan that's acceptable. And, you know, I think that in general in this community, I think Doug is as conservative as anybody on the board is to make sure things are working in the end. Just to be clear though, all of those issues are under the, the purview of the conservation issue. Well, it's not just the I, I, I agree and I understand. So you don't have any plans in the existing application to excavate the infiltration basin and there's no information presented with about uh, the, what's in, in the wise hole of water. In the infiltration basin, that's correct. We we default to our original design on the infiltration basin. Um, on the assumption that it's just the lack of maintenance that is created. Right. Hmm. And if it's not maintenance, if it's an issue with the soil that's below it, then that soil would be removed because we are proposing this as if it's a new project essentially to get an order of conditions. So at the end of this, it has to work. So exactly how we get there, we won't know until we get into it. My plan is to put together a, you know, a little bit of a narrative for Doug to say, <laughs> you know, we're going to go out and we're going to do some hand test pits to basically look at a number of locations to see if we can see a layer that's blinding, to look at what the soil is below that, um, and then I think, you know, step our way through. And if it turns out that, you know, the, the fines have gone, you know, all the way through the gravel that was put in in the bottom of the basin, then it would need to be replaced. Our hope is that that's not the case. And my experience is on the other side of the road when we had the larger infiltration basin here, and then there are a couple of bioretention areas it was, I mean, literally a half an inch layer of the, the fines from the loam. And once you got through that, it was clean, beautiful gravel. So I'm optimistic we're going to find that here. If we don't, we have a plan to replace it. And sir, you had a uh, uh, question about the uh, plantings around the uh, bioretention. Correct. So uh, the planning plan has shifted from what the commission previously approved, um, so I'd asked about that. And the overall planning plan was also vastly reduced from what was approved by the planning board, so that can be that corrected. Uh, that, that's actually not an error in the plan. It's a combination of what has been planted already versus what needs to be planted. So that's what came out of the looking at what's there out there now versus you know what's the existing project that's already done versus what's proposed. Our intention is, you know, plant for plant to produce or to plant just as many plants as we proposed originally. Some of those trees, some of those plants are already there. And in the in the case of the bioretention areas, um, the planting plan, it looks like wasn't ever overlaid onto the utility plan. So there were areas where we were showing some plantings in the riprap outlet area, which clearly wouldn't work. So we did move some of the plantings around. But um, and I think in the response that we issued earlier today to the commission, you know, we're not proposing any fewer plants. We want to be held to the original standard that we proposed. Uh, it's just that some of the plants already exist and some of them are proposed on the drawings, but it's not a change from what the commission originally approved. Okay. Other questions or comments from the commission? So the placement of those plantings, I'm trying to envision the uh, western side of that, where those retention uh, ponds are. Uh, the, the infiltration basins here? Infiltra infiltration basins. Yeah, and actually, I think I might have, here are, here's a landscape plan. So essentially what we're, what's still proposed is all of these uh, trees and plants that are darker that are essentially associated with this phase of the project. And you can see the survey located, and I'm not sure that it was 100% correct. We had an intern out there this morning or yesterday who actually went through and counted every single tree and plant that was out there to make sure that at the end of the day, we're coming up with a, with a number that matches what was originally proposed. So a lot of these trees are existing and proposed within, within the project. 
and there's a bunch of them that are on this side that are proposed as part of the next phase of the project that we're not we're not reducing that we're not changing that and then I think there might be this is these are the buyer retention areas um, so this is the one on the north side so this is the one that's adjacent to the uh, the route 91 off ramp and this is you know specifically where we pulled some of the plantings oh, out of this area here and then move them around and it does show the larger areas of the you know whatever those larger um, plant areas are there so it's been a while since i've been out to the site but there seems to be looks like you have to remove quite a few yep trees in, on that west side exactly the, the plants and the trees that are within those bioretention areas that aren't working are going to need to come out it's going to need to be maintained and they're going to need to be replaced i think many of them are likely not going to survive a transplant so you know that that is the plan is that you know at the end of the project when the basin works it will all be planted just as it was approved originally and maintain to be sure that they live. I think there was some some loss in probably that basin more than the other one because it did stay wetter longer last uh, last fall than last summer as well. Other questions? I'm just curious about the actual timing of the original order that's expired that was not renewed, and so this is for this phase for expressly however the uh order the conditions will be imported to still apply or are we just dealing with the phase four are we deciding would, all of the conditions from that permit since um this still involves construction of the building and work to the stormwater system is really valid so that those should be uh, we, those should be yeah so we should include those as well as conditional And to the extent that the previous one has expired and no longer applies, yet we're applying all the conditions, it's just to this geographic region of phase four. I just want to be clear. It's it's for I would say the the improvements that need to happen where we're talking about some right. some uh, you know improvements here and minor grading potentially. What we're talking about in the in the um, bioretention areas and in both of these um, infiltration basins, there's potentially some minor grading along with the maintenance that we're doing. So those are the things that are, I guess I would say, phase three related okay. that are going to be part of the project. And then the remainder of the project is the phase four, the future development plan for the building. And the, uh, sorry, the expired permit was for the totality. The, the expired permit was for this entire. So it was the new one. Is that right? Well, yes, but the new, but a portion of that has already been completed. Okay, so. Right, so just using the landscape as an example, the site plan is presented as the entire site. So Correct. the order conditions that may issue now would apply to the entire site, even though the landscape planting, for example, is just about the shade of area. Correct. I guess I would say that I think, I think that's the case. I mean, certainly, I would say there's there's no intention to, you know, do any construction associated with you know the building or the parking areas that are right. in compliance that are that are done in work. Right. It just needs to be clear when it's like, for example, let's just say the order says that 30 new trees shall be planted. That's 30 new trees here. If you've already got, you know, 50 planted. You can't say, oh, we're done. We've already got 50 to 30. Right. So this has to apply not to the site, but to the particular yep. region, depending on the. Yeah, that's why it looks like there's a discrepancy in the planting plan. So I, I do think that needs to be addressed with the and, and what's, modified plan. And what's the easiest way to handle that is to show all of the planting for the site? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. just use the, the previous planting plan. Make okay. the changes to the um, fire retention area when you need to do it where it doesn't make sense to plant okay. the tree um, for the, the whole site. So half of it's already done. Right. And, and that's easy enough. And I know that when we when we the, the first the first round and the first submittal that we submitted to you, um, I believe that's exactly the approach we took. And then we revised it after a meeting on site with you and Doug to take the 
or that this is the existing condition approach and moving it forward. So we can go back to that plan. For you. Well, it, it's not a shift in the approach. It's it, there was a previous application that never made it to the commission, and that pretended to declare as the winter staff, which right. didn't get there. But the landscaping plan and those relevant documents should be the same. Okay. Well, so you have two uh, uh, engineer references in, in your suggested conditions. One was addressing the functionality of the bioretention areas that we've already discussed. That you're not sure until you get in there. Um, so to have a, a condition that says a year from uh, now, uh, essentially, uh, to have a professional engineer assess whether, in fact, it is working and uh, uh, report that officially back to uh, uh, the commission. The uh, the other comment you had, sir, was about more of the whole management of the project. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering what, you spoke of a project engineer, um, and I'm wondering what, what kind of skill set or what qualifications, um, what's the need that you see, see that uh, position added? I, I think in, in this, in the first phase of the project, it was pretty clear that there wasn't someone on site on a day-to-day -day basis overseeing construction and the failure in the basin is really reflected, oh, so okay. it would be beneficial to specifically require that. So somebody on a regular basis making sure things are going yeah. according to plan so we don't end up once again in a position of cleaning up later. Okay, got it. Other comments or questions from commissioners? Any other comments, questions? And uh, motion to close the hearing? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so, let's record what we've already said. We uh, want to incorporate either by reference or by uh, in, in some way uh, the uh, aspects of the prior permits that would be still uh, applicable. Um, I don't know but what's the best way to define that inclusion with that reference. I we could just include all of those mm -hmm. conditions. Yeah. Okay. That's, that seems already to me. And then, um, and to, the, to the extent that it references the site plan, or what, the same site plan, it's just the, it's, you know, it's, it's the references to a particular point on the site plan. So as long as it's always the same site plan, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. And, um, The commission is uh, satisfied with the open questions that have been adequately addressed, um, such that we move to uh, uh, conditions. We did not include the order of conditions. And the, those that uh, the couple of serious recommendations can be uh, combined. So we were uh, considering this a uh, motion to approve the additional order of conditions. Um, and then there's a few things that Sarah was suggesting about uh, assessing the northern wetlands to make sure it hasn't become dewatered as a result of this. Um, um, and there's also the assessment of the bioretention areas, the rain gardens, infiltration basement, so we have state by professional engineer, um, and the uh, ongoing oversight uh, by a project engineer to make sure things are going according to plan so they don't have to clean it up later. Um, Sarah, do you still have concerns about the soil mixes? You were saying that it should be independently tested? Uh, yeah, I mean, if the I think that it should, 
the commission should probably require a detailed plan, as Brian discussed, to, um, to address what will happen with those fire retention basins um, and if they propose to keep the soil to then get it So it's just adding to the description uh, that was already given about how you handle this to be correct, to be a lab test, uh, the penalty. So basically, once they have done the test and test right. it, and then it's in the lab. Any other condition? Anything? Someone want to make a motion to that effect? A motion to approve with the conditions that we've discussed. So moved. And a second? Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. Good luck. Thank you so yeah. much. Appreciate your time. The question was the timing on the construction. Uh, I would say it's as soon as we can get all the pieces together here and get good weather. So. <laughs> well, not much of a winter to get in the way. So. Uh, but here comes March. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. The rain. So, but, yeah. We know what happens in March. All right. Yeah. That thing is amazing. It works. Thank you. Have a good Thank evening. You very much. Um, next, uh, certificate of compliance Riverside Drive. So this is, um, I actually sent this out previously. Um, but we held off because there was a requirement for a um, assessment of planning areas and the, the licensed site professional found one that had been submitted years and years ago. So that was fine. And this was a long, ongoing project. This was uh -huh. addressing contamination for recovery of the lake. So this is, uh, this is recovery or? This is recovery. Okay. So this is the recovery remediation. It doesn't address the more recent projects that have been permitted now. There's parking lots and drainage. Mm -hmm. So then did we issue a, a, a certificate of compliance for that historic project? Does that have any impact on any, any of the current? It does not. Work that you have? Okay. And we need a motion to approve a certificate of compliance for uh, that company work, that specific company work. And when was, when was this order issued? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was an ongoing. They kept, they kept finding more, so they kept having to do more things. And I think it's. I mean, it will never be done, um, but it's very. It's done. So we want to make a motion to that effect. So moved. And a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. And then we have another. The other one is even older. <laughs> So it's when they're getting ready to sell, they try to bring it up and bring it up. Yeah. Is, is that your own area? Is that a Google map? That's Google map, yeah. yeah. Your wife's age is interesting. We're going to inquire. It's amazing how this town has changed. Yeah. 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 All right, so this one's so old, we had a hard time figuring out what it meant before. It was what? Uh, so this is this was a an order resulting from a violation on Locust Street. There was some filling to the rear here, uh, and the order required that this building be constructed basically where it is. So the only thing to look at it is is the site stable? Is the building where it's supposed to be? So, and it is. So, so this <laughs> that's good. <laughs> so this is the Asbel plan. Um, I, we couldn't even find the plan for the original application. So this is um, the pediatrician's here. Okay. So this is on the other side. So this is only resulting from a property transfer. There was one to clean it up. So not much to look at. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> but they, so basically, the order required this. And 
that it be located here and not say here uh -huh. and that this dumping that had been going on stop and the building is there and then the dumping has stopped so i i would recommend we we issue it <laughs> <laughs> there's not a whole lot to go on. And this comes up now because they're selling the property? Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. Uh, someone want to make a motion to grant this certificate of compliance? What is so moved. Is anybody going to uh, have a second? Second. Second. Is anybody going to, uh, are they going to come back before us to do something? No. Then? No. This okay. is this is it. They just wanted to close it out. I mean, this site's pretty built out. There's not really any room to do anything else. Okay. There's a um, there's a steep review here. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Uh, Are there any much information? <laughs> and do we have anything else to? Conservation restriction. Yes, we have a CR to sign. Yeah. We are going to close on the golf course tomorrow. And this is very exciting. Uh, yeah, I started reading the population restriction. Oh boy. They're, yeah. they're not as simple. <laughs> they're, they're, almost the they're almost the same, but there are some differences in the they, they take forever <laughs> to get through, so when we finally get the approval for safe, for local signatures, it's like a celebration. <laughs> I think you're reading it's such a job. Uh, this one was a little bit different because it, it does have to permit all of the ongoing restoration right. restorations. And I know Hyundai was not mentioned as one of the passengers. It's not. We are always silent on hunting to allow the Conservation Commission the freedom to change its mind. Okay. Unless it's specifically pertinent to the. Yes. Yeah. And we did go out to the today for the. Um, Municipal vulnerability program funding to allow us to start restorations, which is exciting. So we're filling catch basin, we're pulling out drainage. Yes. Uh, the golf course? Yep. Mm -hmm. We'll be putting up deer fencing. There's an awful lot of deer there. Um, they're planting trees. Start on the trees. Uh, well, starting right away? Uh, starting hopefully April. Yeah, so yeah. 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 Tight time frame on the grant funds. They have to be expended oh, right. by the end of June. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. They have to be expended by the end of June. Yes. Oh wow. This is very, very quick. <laughs> so so this is the we don't have all of this. It's just good. The Audubon. Uh, I'm sorry. Could you describe the numbers? Probably. I'm just curious. Where um, this is a land grant for six hundred. Yes. The uh, four hundred thousand. Oh, four hundred. And the total purchase price was six thirty. Hmm. Wow. Well, okay. Nice. Nice. Um, and I did do, with Kevin's approval and emergency certification for me to go out and reach a beer deal by hand. Which I did, and I made them very upset. And they did, yes. Did they come out? And they did come out. They didn't get near me, but they're so lurking. Okay. <laughs> like, no, wait, so where is it? Uh, so this is on Turkey Hill Road um, at the old access to the Mineral Hills. Um, uh -huh. it's a yeah, there's a there's a driveway that gets split the pond, and south of there, the beavers have created a little dam on the stream. So we breached it just enough to hopefully convince them they don't need to overtop the road. It seems to be working. So do you need a vote on that or just no? That's information. information. Yeah. Um, and our experience so far with beavers is if they hear the water running, they think it still needs to get blocked. There is a beaver deceiver under the driveway, um, and that makes more noise than the stream uh, okay. So they seem to be concentrating their efforts over there. So hopefully it's working. <laughs> I guess it's a cool place to see beavers. Let's go check it out. There's a beaver lodge right on the side of Turkey Hill Road. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. It's not huge. Um, yeah. It must be just a couple. Kind of cool. What's, what's the plan for the golf course? I mean, so you'll get in and you'll do some, like, the initial fermentation work this year. And then... So, restoring natural drainage, first of all. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of drainage tiles and catch bases right. and everything to get the water off the course as quickly as possible. So pull that out right away, do some plantings, and then 
kind of see what happens. It's really a blank slate with no wrong options at this point. But it's all conservation land, not going to be uh, shared with the rest of the department. Uh, it's not. Yeah. Uh, there's five acres set aside for potential community gardens and farming, and maybe two yeah. to the left. Was there any changes? Maybe. It will be different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can ask that from that over there. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But, I mean, that's, so, what is the, uh, is that totally uh, a matter of decision or are there limitations to how controlled you can make the, uh, the, the natural? Yeah. Reclamation, because right? it left to its own devices, it would be all forests in twenty years. Uh, with a lot of invasive species, most yeah. likely. Um, mm-hmm. And we found out that the when the course was developed, they brought in tons and tons and tons of sand from the Willard gravel pits. Uh-huh. So it, it probably wouldn't be the type of forest that you'd naturally see nice. here. Um, we're working with the the tree board and the tree commission to do a lot of plantings, and we're looking at species that aren't quite naturally occurring here yet. But are native there and a little bit south of here in terms of climate adaptation. So we have some events. Don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because we, you know, we usually, as a commission, spend a lot of our time uh, on permitting, a little bit of our time on acquisition, but not so much on management and uh, uh, cultivation of uh, the areas that are under our jurisdiction. So interesting to have one that would be sort of a uh, Tree planting, yeah. yeah, it'll be great. And Arcadia and Mass Audubon are really excited because that the stream that flows through there and eventually into Arcadia is an incredibly flashy system. Uh, because it's you know, every time it rains, everything <laughs> flows through as quickly yeah. as possible because you don't want water in a golf course, and then it, it's resulting in deviation downstream. So they're really interested to see how that will improve things. Right? Good, good, good. And do we have any other business? To discuss. I want to just bring up that um, the Brunswick Coalition uh, Board has made some proposals again about managing dogs um, and uh, would like to have a meeting with us at some point to discuss um, implementing of those things, some of which would be uh, our support and perhaps. And maybe we would do it here at, at a commission meeting, having a dog officer and whoever the dog officer reports to the president, uh, having uh, maybe Jim Nash, who uh, voluntarily came and has worked through city council um, to participate in the discussion about what the council might be willing or able to support. Because some of their ideas are uh, uh, can we do something about professional dog workers using? So that that's probably one of the biggest problems they have. Um, we could have some suggestions for additional signage and that might be included in that. Um, but at any rate, just no particular time frame, but sometime soon to uh, have a portion of our To meeting. have all the players in one room. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ken, I think you've mentioned it's so nice for that. Looking at my calendar, I saw that's Passover, so we can't have a meeting like that. Ah, uh, so, so, so the no meeting is online. No meeting at all. Okay. And I don't know if anybody saw downstairs um, at one of the going tables. There's a lot of brochures from the UPC about dog waste and um, asking people to go sign a pledge to pick up your, your dog food. <laughs> and that's part of the, the city's uh, MS4 stormwater permitting with the federal government. Uh-huh. Or we're required to undertake a certain amount of public outreach. Demonstrated effort to. Yeah. Hmm. Probably the only people who will do that are the ones who are already doing it. Probably. Probably. And then there'll be a fair portion of those people who tie it up and move it next to the trail. Yes. Yeah. Well, I do that, but only if I'm moving back. Move it yeah. 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 right. Don't know. forget it. No, I get it. Right. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to do these personal bags to make sure. I know. I see a lot of right little bags on the trail. <laughs> Priscilla made banana bread for the person that we confronted about not picking up. And ever since that, she 
picks up. Yeah. Really? That's, that's a good way to I think you just came up with the solution all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Fresh on big banana bread. People right. well, right. well, the law. You get, <laughs> get treats. Sort of like you train a dog. You know, you have to kind of shame you make it up, but it's in a good way. Sorry, we're going to be on the 12th of March, 18th. And what do we have on that agenda so far? Uh, there's a dock permit application for Riverbank Road. Uh, maybe. You know, it's um, curiosity question because usually we're dealing with wetlands rather than riverbank stuff. But under what conditions does somebody who wants to have a dock? Have to come before the commission. Uh, it's alteration of riverfront area. So they're actually and potentially this is not underwater. a floating dock with a chain attaching it to something. This is actually displacing bank or uh, the, the stairs going down. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Chapter ninety one. Sure. Chapter ninety one. Good luck. Yes, that oh. might take some time. And they also need a permit from oil, gas, and electric. Oh. Because all your gas and electric has to review all of the in river activities within the region, yeah. Which goes to the next turn. Goes all the way to the next turn. Oh, really? Yep. Goes to where? Turns well. That's amazing. Journeys. How did that become a thing? I'm, I'm not really sure. It's part of their federal um, preferred permit. Yeah. Oh. I'll throw this out if you guys want to see some cool stuff this summer. We're going to start to work at Mount Tom to remove all the massive structures out of the Connecticut River. Um, oh, really? So we have these huge 10 foot diameter um, non contact holy water intake and discharge pipes that are about 25 feet below bank oh. that go into the water about oh. uh, 70 feet out. And then there's, there's, a, there's a giant concrete dock that sticks way out into the river that's. Um, all sheet piling and concrete and the sheet piling that you can barely see that kind of protects the intake and discharge. So we're doing a, a coffer dam to bubble curtains and relocating muscle curtains. Oh, right. and and right. We just got all the permitting in place, so that's happening this summer. There's confirmed muscles there? Cool. Yeah, we had, we had um, diving contractors. Yeah. Out, and, then they, and then before, you know, all the coffer dams and bubble curtains go in, they have to check again, and then throughout the project, they have to go in and make sure enough sturgeon got in the area and the muscles are all out and relocate them. And the reason to not just leave all this stuff is for what? what for which reason are you there? Uh, it's part of the consent order with DEP. Um, but, you know, to, to leave it, we had to argue about benefit. Mm -hmm. um, so I forget, it's part of the chapter 91 stuff. So you have to illustrate a benefit to the the public use of the natural no. resource of the river, which we couldn't do. No, I see. Okay. So, I guess so as long as there's you no know, there's no net loss from the removal. But hmm. sometimes there is, sometimes it's better to assume that Yeah, not in this they're, they're in this yeah. case they're just too big. Yeah. And there has been issues where where ten years ago oh, someone there. someone hit the dock and got hurt and yeah. sued the property owner. Yeah. And so the, the plant itself, the generating plants, is that all being eventually removed? Yeah, the plant itself is fully um, demolished. Mm -hmm. There's some final things like processing concrete slacks and uh, mm -hmm. things like that are happening. And then there's a wastewater treatment plant on site that's being demolished right now. Uh, so then probably only seven, eight years ago, I toured it from the dysfunction. Yep. With Claire uh, Higgins, that because uh, they had switched from coal to uh, gas plant, and it, it was, and they recap they installed some new uh, mercury uh, capture uh, and cross and and so they were sort of celebrating how green they were getting. Yeah, I forget. Eight the, years later, they, we helped them put in that air emission control system, really which was like twenty million dollars to put that in. 2012, and then 
the, plant shut down in 2014. The, the mercury captain? Yeah. yeah. I didn't hear I wouldn't imagine they didn't see a return on investment. No, I mean, what's funny is we helped them design that, that air commission permitted, and then we also sat there and watched the demo crew just like hack it apart with machines and like, <laughs> giant cutting torches. We were like, oh my god, they didn't have to waste some money. Yeah, really. really. Must be tearing a reed, I think we are adjourned. Would we uh, want to pick an alternate date if uh, since the. Uh, Suggested date for the dog discussion is is turns out to be I should know this my wife for kids and the daughters. Um I'm gonna have to reschedule. Well we we merely have to have a forum for the commission part of the trick is gonna be getting the other players. Yeah. And I, I don't know what the police department is.